Hello, ladies, and welcome back. We had a fun live session. We talked about how we can quilt a cathedral window. What I did was pull out my project from March 2018. And I show step by step how to quilt the cathedral window. This is my cathedral window. I made this cathedral window using techniques shared by Jenny Dolan of Missouri Star Quilt Company. And then I added my own little flavor. And I will show you my tips for doing the top stitch, tips for how to preview designs in your quilt, and then I will show you this finishing technique, a faux binding. Watch to the end. Don't miss out on those fun techniques. Don't forget, this is a condensed version of the live session. That live session was one hour. I've condensed it so that I can give you the best parts of how I quilted this project. But it, the full replay of the live session is available on the Living Water Quilter YouTube channel. Just go to playlists and look for Quilt Conversations Live and you'll be able to watch all the live sessions, but there are also condensed versions so that you can get to the tutorial contained in each of those live sessions. Okay, I'll catch up with you at the end of the video. This is a project I made in 2018 and it was for Island Boutique. Again, it was as an ambassador project and each month we had a different theme and this theme was try something new. I wanted to try this. I thought, well, let me go to YouTube and see who has tutorials. So, so I ended up seeing Jenny Dolan's Cathedral Window Quilt Tutorial and I liked the way she did it. But I do have a couple of things that I changed to make it simpler for me. I would make rows or columns. I would make each block glue basting down the pretty fabric for the inside the cathedral window, glue baste them. Then I would stitch that row or column together, adding the, the next step. And then each row or column would be sewn together. You can see that in this image. I prefer to roll those nice bias edges that create that beautiful curve and glue base them in place before I take it to the machine. That way they're not going to move. They're all in place. Now I'm not going to go through the whole tutorial on how to make a cathedral window quilt because this is all about quilting. How to quilt a cathedral window quilt. If you want to learn how to make it, I do recommend looking at Jenny's process and then visiting. Another interesting one is from Shabby Fabrics. They have another tutorial so that you can see the different methods and see which one you like. Jenny's was a little bit simpler for me with a little bit extra with the glue basting. I just felt like the glue basting helped keep these pieces in place when I brought it to the sewing machine. So now those rolled edges that create the cathedral window and the fabric in the cathedral window are glue basted. The only thing that has stitches at this point are the seams that stitch each block, each cathedral window block together. Again, if you haven't made this before, it might sound a little confusing. But once you go visit Jenny's video, you'll understand a little bit more. I just wanted to give you some context to my stitching process before actually showing you how it was quilted. Now I can take it to the machine. I don't have to fiddle with those rolled edges on the cathedral window because they are glue basted down. I take it to the machine and Jenny shows you this in her video, I stitch down a, with a straight stitch over those rolled edges. But here's another major difference. In Jenny's video, she 
suggests and she demonstrates that you stitch these rolled edges at the same time you make your quilt sandwich so, so it becomes a quilt as you go project. I broke that down to two steps rather than one step. I didn't want to stitch these rolled edges and quilt it to the batting and back. There's too much curving and movement of this cathedral window to try and move, I think, batting and backing. And there was likely to be more mistakes or errors doing it that way. So that is one of the steps that's going to help me free motion quilt and ruler quilt this project. After all of the cathedral windows were top stitched, then I can make my quilt sandwich. I made the quilt sandwich. I stabilized the quilt by stitching along the curves, not on the cathedral window, but on the background along every curve and along the edge of the quilt. You see that red border? I stitched right in along that seam. You can kind of see the edges of that fabric come up because it's stitched down and it's pushing that little strip of red upwards. I decided not to quilt inside the, the fabric in the window, but only to quilt around the window. So I took my plexiglass, and this is my plexiglass with red duct tape along the edge. So I just go to Home Depot or Lowe's and they have pre-cut plexiglass, eight and a half by 11, um, 11 by 14, 20 by 24 inches, various sizes. I took an eight and a half by 11 plexiglass. Then I got duct tape and I put duct tape along the edge because then I can put that plexiglass on top of my quilt sandwich, use a whiteboard marker, and practice potential designs right on top of the quilt. And that's what you see in this image. You see the plexiglass on top of the quilt sandwich, and I'm previewing potential designs to fill that space. And then I would just use a whiteboard eraser if I didn't like it and I try something else. Here's another one that I did a preview of what design to fill in those spaces. Here's another potential design. Which one do you like? Here's another potential design. What do you think about this one? These are pearls or circles. That's the design that I chose. But do you see the benefit of previewing and how this plexiglass helped me select which one I wanted to do? How many of you preview designs? It's stabilized. I can start quilting anywhere. I can start doing the decorative quilting along the edge or inside the center. In this case, I have decided to do a cross hatch with an acrylic ruler. And this is a curved ruler. In your quilting journey, you're going to come across various types of curves. You have the drunkard's path, you have the cathedral window. What else is a curved design? Um, I can't think of another one. If you know of another curve pattern, let, let us know in the comments. What curve quilt pattern design have you made? All of those curves are different, so not every curve ruler is going to work. So I went through my curve rulers to see which one was closest to the arc of this curve. That is a Wesley Design arc or curve ruler. I'm going to show you the rulers that I pulled out to see which one would be the right curve. These are all the arc or curve rulers I have. The, the smallest one there is the four inch arc. The next one is a six inch. 
then in between that, those two are from Accents in Design. Accents in Design makes curve and straight rulers. The cathedral window has a deep curve and I use that 12 inch arc for the cathedral window. So that's the 12 inch arc and it was perfect for this design. Since it was a perfect curve, I could easily do a cross hatch and use the lines on the rulers to do the cross hatch. You see how that acrylic ruler is on the edge of that cathedral window? Once I put my ruler down to stitch, I'm gonna stitch a quarter inch away from the edge of that cathedral window. Then I stitch along the edge, along that red border, right there in the seam, until I'm another quarter inch away and I just shift the ruler over and then I stitch again. So basically you're stitching, stitching curves in one direction. Then you're stitching the opposite direction. So when you stitch all the curves this way, then you stitch the next one this way. So you're going to get a cross hatch because you are overlapping those quarter distant curves. The cross hatch could be a quarter inch, it could be a half inch, it could be three quarters, it's up to you. But the main thing is that you repeat the same distance. Done. After the cross hatch was done, then I just proceeded to the next step. So remember, I like to do things and I recommend to do them in steps. We have steps and they're small incremental steps so that if I need to shift and go another direction, there's not going to be a problem doing that. So now stitching in in between each one of those cathedral windows. And so I would look at the quilt and say, how can I stitch continuously? What's the longest path that I can stitch continuously without breaking thread? Here's an overhead view so that you can see I stitched this on my home machine. I want to show you what it looks like in the back. Now, remember a couple of lives we talked about applique and I showed you how I did the, um, the bed runner with the leaves and the two stages I had with the leaves in terms of stitching down the leaves and I stitched around the leaves twice. When you looked at the back, you only saw the stitch that went around once when it became a quilt sandwich. The same thing here. Because I stabilized those edges along the cathedral window when it was still just a quilt top, you're only going to see on the back one layer of stitching around the cathedral window. So here it is. You don't see it twice. You only see it once and it was done after the edges along the cathedral window had a top stitch to hold down those edges and then stitched underneath or beside the edges to stabilize the quilt sandwich. Breaking it down step by step, it helps simplify the process, but guess what? It also allows us to do a quilt project over small increments of time. We don't always have a lot of time, but if we get a half hour, 45 minutes, 15 minutes, and we know that step, oh, I can do that step in 30 minutes. I can sew tonight for 30 minutes before I go to bed because that, that's one small step. So what I've shown you now is part of the back, not the full back. Remember in the previous photo, which I'll go back to, there's that red border. Are you wondering what did she do with that red border? This is the finished cathedral window. And that red, that red border is actually a faux red binding. It's a faux binding. The red fabric was sewn on as a border, but it became the binding because I used the facing technique 
to finish the quilt. So this is what it looks like in the back. This is the facing. Where you stitch, top stitch fabric, and then fold it to the back. It, it creates this border around the back. And the reason why it looks like binding, because remember when I first made the quilt sandwich, I did a stitch in the ditch around the edge of that quilt sandwich. Now, of course, this is just one way to quilt it. Some people don't quilt in between the cathedral windows. They may do the quilt as you go that you will see in Jenny Dolan's video, or they may stitch just a little bit in between each one. It's really up to you. Well, I'm glad you're still here. That means that you got to see how I made the faux binding. This faux binding with facing. Have you ever faced a quilt before? That facing helped me create that faux binding on this cathedral window quilt. What else did you learn in this session? You learned how you could preview designs with plexiglass and the benefit of doing so. You're able to see how some designs might just have too much thread. And if you choose that design, then maybe you might choose a different thread weight, something lighter, so that you wouldn't have a lot of thread buildup. And you also saw how I prefer to stitch down each of these curves on the cathedral window prior to making the quilt sandwich. That just made this stable by glue basting it and then stitching it down before making the quilt sandwich. It made it a lot easier. And did you notice how I added more steps? Each one of those small little steps are things that can be done in a short period of time. And you don't feel overwhelmed when you have those small steps. When you only have 30 minutes or so or 10 minutes or so, you know exactly the step that you're at and you can just work on that step. If you want more information about how to quilt a cathedral window the way I did or just learn about my process, visit my blog post from March 2018. You just go to my website and you click on archive on the bottom of the list of resources and you see archive you click that and look for March 2018. You will see photos that you've seen already in the video but also you'll see more information about the glue basting and the different techniques that I use to make my project. So I hope you have an opportunity to use some of these techniques. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.